Hi, my name is Joe Jackson. I'm a journalist, author, interviewer, and broadcaster. And a few years back, I published an ebook called Bono's Soul Searching and Uncensored. It needs revising and correction, so it probably would be best if you didn't buy it until I do both those things. But on the cover, it says, includes Bono on Elvis. Strange image. And it goes back to a chat Bono and I had in a hotel near his home in Kalini on the south side of Dublin in early 1994. He said to me at one point, something like, if you serve money rather than your art, you're selling out. If you serve money making, sorry. But here I should point out that this was six or more years before you 2 got pissed off at the Irish government capping its tax break for artistic work at €250,000 and moved most of their business empire to the Netherlands to avail of the low tax rates. This later led to headlines in, say, the Guardian newspaper, such as tax rogues like Bono are harming the world's poorest people. And earlier, it had led to campaigners at Glastonbury in 2011, while Bono was singing The Fly, letting loose a balloon on which were the words, You pay tax too, question mark. That made me smile. For a simple reason, a decade earlier, when U2 released The Fly as a single that would be available for only a limited period, I said in the Irish Times that this was a ploy to get more money from fans. But back then, Bono respected my opinion and later said he had no problem when I got the boot in. But during our interview about Elvis for a book I was writing, there was no need for me to get the boot in again about their approach to making money. Besides, I'd interviewed way too many musicians, such as black blues singer Honey by Edwards, who said he never got a cent from Sun Records. In fact, ripping off musicians was, and probably still is, the norm in the music business. So whenever I could, as someone who fought like hell against being ripped off as a journalist, which I often was, I would happily advise musicians how to try walk that line between art and commerce. Also, as an Elvis fan since I was a kid, I knew that back in 1956, Elvis started Elvis Presley Enterprises to get a cut from everything sold that bore his name, from the I love Elvis to the I hate Elvis buttons. He was advised to do so by Parker, his manager, who also sadly saw to it that Elvis and the king himself must bear some of the blame for this, ripped off many composers by insisting that Elvis's publishing house, Gladys Music, get the publishing royalties or half the composer royalties if Elvis covered your song. Tellingly, during that interview in 1994, Bono admitted to me for the first time in public that you 2 took their cue in many ways from Elvis's 1970s motto, T-C-B. Taking care of Bono, sorry, taking care of business. So, more seriously, nearly 30 years later, am I saying that Bono, who told me in 94 that if you serve money-making rather than your art, you sell out, has long since done so? Even when it comes to not paying 100% of his taxes in Ireland, which would benefit the poor and is a decision that has left him hated by many in his homeland? Am I saying that the latest example of U2 Incorporated, now worth 700 million, further selling out, is by rehashing 40 old songs as a promo for Bono's book 40, or that they're selling out by taking up a residency at the Sphere in Las Vegas where they will rehash Octong Baby? Put bluntly, yes. But let's go back to our chat of innocence when Bono, me, and the world was young, or at least younger. Well, that was, I mean, I thought that was the... Uh, the a Russian newspaper had written an article about Presley a month before he died, said that's what had happened to him. He'd been eaten up by a capitalist machine, he'd served his purpose, he was put back out, and then they needed new idols to yeah. juice youth with their new money. Yeah. And yeah. that this was before he died, they were saying he's now, uh, like, politically on the scrap heap, musically yeah. on the scrap heap. America's finished with him. Yeah. And you could say that. Yeah. And then when he died, America rediscovered the money he could make, so Elvis Presley was rediscovered. Yeah. And he's packaging now, of Elvis. Packaging of Elvis has, has started. So yeah. he's now what? His estate was worth four, it's now worth a hundred million. Mm. That's what that's the last question I really do want to ask you. That balance of him, you know that people tend to forget about him that his slogan at the end was T C B. Yeah. I know. Which was taking care of business. I know. Now this is the part that and I mean I saw that thing this week about Dylan selling the rights to the Times they were changing to a advertise to an accountancy company for an ad on television in America. Has that just happened? Yeah. Ooh. Okay, mm -hmm. so now there's going to be two responses to that, which is, oh, 
and people feeling it. that's the song yeah. of the era and he's decided to sell it. But apparently I was talking to somebody who was participating in the deal. You, you could only talk about the composer. You could not mention, he said the agreement was no mention of the name. So all the time the deal was being done, mm -hmm. but it's gone and he sold it. How do you feel about that? I mean, does that immediately strike you as a betrayal or as good business sense? I don't or know. Both. I mean, Dylan can do what he likes. Um, as far as I'm concerned, he may have his own reasons. Right. He might find it funny. Yeah. And uh, selling uh, that, that song, song to Wall Street. I don't know. Um, the one of the things that I want from you too, again, is to take on this thing of art and commerce that's oh, yeah. Yeah. so swept under the carpet by such recent movements as grunge and. And uh, where you have groups like Nirvana saying, you know, um, we're, uh, you know, we're 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 not we're not in, into corporate uh, uh, corporations, and then signing to a really big one, mm -hmm. and, and and getting away with this sort of well-meaning but unrigorous point of view, and and uh, and we've gone through it with punk, we've gone through it in, uh, with this sort of. That's just middle class thing, middle class bourgeoisie preconceptions with mm -hmm. um, standing apart from co art, must stand apart yeah. from co commerce. Yeah. Whereas they say in black music, they don't have any problems with that. Right. And I would suggest they go too far. Michael Jackson shouldn't be literally king of pop. But I think that. Why? Because of the product element? I don't think he should have a big product on his chest. I think that's embarrassing. <laughs> But what, right. what I what, what I what I do think has to be challenged is the sort of fuzzy mindedness that goes with with a lot of white rock, right. and and I mean we're we're inspired by the factory and Warhol and and that whole thing. We we want we we're enjoying that, sure. and we think that's the future. You know, we we don't think that this sort of 60s 70s revival ideas. I think they're going anywhere. I don't sure. think. I mean, I think white rock has never been as dull, actually. I mean, I right. think it's incredibly dull. Why, though? Because, because of the corporate of these... control. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think the corporations are at all to blame. I all think right. the bands are to, to blame. Right. The corporations... Listen, the corporations were much more in control when Elvis was about. And had, he had much more impact, and he wasn't even on that level. Right. And the Beatles, too, when they were around. I mean, it's not about corporations. Okay. They're, they're the hardware stores. They're the... You know, the distribution uh, thing, they don't control anything, if you have any sense. Okay. But what I'm talking about is, is the kind of mindset. Uh, I think take on the world, go out there, don't be afraid. TCB, I believe in that. Okay, okay. And, uh, yeah, but doesn't that go back to this? Th and I, I'm glad you identified it as such the middle class push. We call it TCB between as art. well, by the way. What? To take care of business? We call it, we use, we quote Elvis on it. Yeah. You know, you know just as an, as an amusing aside, because we are, you know, we, you know, we, we are a gang of four, we're a corporation of five. Yeah. Yeah. And we have, we find that amusing. We have to sit down and go through the numbers and try and get things right. And we, and we call it taking care of business. Do you see? Yeah, but but isn't but isn't this where I see a lot of criticism of the music because it comes from of your music because it comes from those people who do see art, stroke poetry, as pure, and that you're somehow again selling the soul if you get involved at the commercial level, which to me is the silliest, most naive notion. I mean, look, talk to anyone. Talk to any great poet. Talk to Yeats. Talk to Joyce. Talk to Joyce controls so carefully his business right. and the editions. In fact, I just bought an edition of uh, Ulysses from the uh, American First Editions Club, right. which Matisse um, illustrated. But he illustrated Homer's Ulysses, okay? All and right. Joyce fell out with him and wouldn't sign the books. I mean, really. Okay. He, I mean, this is all madness. Yeah. Come, let me I say one other thing. Come. Arriving with the talent comes usually the the drive to defend it and to, or to protect it. Protect it. Yeah, I really think so. Picasso, right. look at them. Right. You know, it just it, it's it's like it's like having it's like you you know it's it's like when you have a child you try to you know get. You try to be a stronger, but you know, you protect it. You, it's, right. it's just, I think it comes. And that's why you're taking on the PRS, isn't it? The Performing Rights Society. But there are all those things. We, um, and the other thing, again, finally, is 
is that business shouldn't be left out of the creative process. You, right. you can be creative right. within a business realm. With business realm, right. and things like that, and uh, and and I I think the key is to serve the vision, not the making of money. If you serve money making, you sell out your vision. Right. But that is not to say that you shouldn't um, be smart. Yeah. You know, and um, you could actually find they say that Presley fell down there despite his proclaimed take care of business that ending with four million and in debt and with Parker having it all is the real object lesson for most rock or artists to not give it away to I mean he ended up Parker ended up being in financial control when Presley was sick and dying and wanted to go to a health farm. I've heard Parker said you can't you've hundred and twenty people depending on you working. And he had to get out and do that last six-week tour when anyone could see with those film cameras he was ready to die. He apparently, according to the to three sources I've heard, financially felt obliged to go out and do that tour that finally fucking maybe broke his spirit. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's surely a, it, a hidden it, lesson that nobody's yeah. taken from Elvis's life. Or it could also be that Colonel Parker knew that without the discipline of having to turn up and do things, he might. that he might have actually... Crashed in on himself go. before that. Yeah, that's, I'm just, I'm just sure, you know, sure. advocate. It could have been like that. Rather than just A or B. I, has Parker agreed to an interview yet? No. I mean, he's 90 and ready to go, isn't he? Yeah. No, I don't think Parker's going to talk to anybody, you know? Which is a real shame. Because mm. he is going to be then devil incarnate for the rest of time. Yeah. Unless he gives some kind of idea of where he was coming from or why or yeah. what he had to put up with as Presley's manager when Presley was gone. The thing that most impresses me about Parker. Have you ever seen that early photo session of Elvis on the road? Really great photographer, I forget his name. Oh yeah, Albert Wertheimer or something, yeah. Fabulous. Fabulous, aren't they? How did he find them? We didn't have that sauce. Yeah. In the Image conscious 80s. Yes. We didn't have that sort of This is the guy in the 50s just starting out. That's right. And, and they found that. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. you know, a crap photographer will make you look crap. And he knew Colonel Cartolic, I presume, must have known this boy. Better get the right. And he got started at the top. This is a world class photographer from very early on. That's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. For 50, and, and I thought that shows an incredible sauce. Right. So he couldn't have been all. Well, you admire yeah. him at some levels, then. I mean, you have to admire Parker for. I'm just saying on that level. As the business. Uh, yeah, well, it's all pretty muddy. Yeah. I mean, I, the whole story is very complex. And, yeah. And we have never heard from his side. None of us have. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? He has never. Mm. I'd love to get to him. Ask Jerry. Yeah. Jerry's probably the only one who could. Yeah. Have you spoken to Jerry Schilling? No, I never. Paul, Paul said to me I should try and get I think with Jerry should. Schilling if I'm trying to get... I think you should, and you have... You can, if, he, if he wants to call me to back right. you up, I'll do that. I met him just like two weeks ago at the Hall of Fame. All right. So, he's okay. very helpful. Hi, Joe Jackson here again. I thank you for listening to this edition of the Joe Jackson Interviews podcast. If you want to check out some of my articles, you can go to my website, joejacksoninterviewer.com. And as I say, my ebook, Bono, Soul Searching and Uncensored, is available from Amazon and so on. With its errors, you could still buy it should you choose to do so. But as I said earlier, it might be best to wait. 